Um, my name is Laura Hawk, and we are here at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Um, I come to you with um, some of our good men, with Father Brian Christensen, our pastor, and two of our seminarians, Josiah Hansen and Robert Kenyon. Um, and we are shooting this short video because it is um, the stewardship of vocations during the month of May here at the cathedral. Um, so we just want to shed a bit more light on what vocations um, mean and uh, take a little bit of a personal experience from these gentlemen. Uh, but first and foremost, Brother Brian, will you please tell us more about the stewardship of vocations? Yeah, throughout the month of May, we're focusing on the way that God calls us uh, to uh, a deeper life of discipleship. Um, there's many vocations, right? The vocation to marriage, vocation to consecrated life, and the vocation to priesthood um, and service in the life of the church. All of them are called to a deeper way of serving the Lord in love, being his instruments, and discovering what he has in store for us. So we want to just really understand the gift of the vocations that are that God provides for us and how each one of us in our families and in our individual lives can come to know that vocation, that calling in Christ, um, and to live it out more fully. Okay, so now I just want to open it up to talk about um, what led you to take a look at what seminary really entails. I'd say first and foremost, the movement of the Holy Spirit. So God alone works within the heart. Um, but he also works oftentimes, most of the time, through different things externally uh, as he works through them as a cause. So uh, to that end, I would say a really good friendships in high school, uh, friendships with some priests, uh, including Brother Brian, um, and then being inspired by the lives that I saw lived out by priests around me. Um, it wasn't like this movement of I'm going to become a priest and I'm going to white knuckle my way for the next eight years uh, to make that happen but it was more of like uh this seems like an interesting life and there's a profound depth that i can see within the people around me that are living it um so why not give it a year or two uh, to see what happens uh, so i entered seminary yeah cool okay yeah for me it was uh something uh similar but it played out in uh in my life here at the cathedral as a matter of fact as a parishioner in the air force and so people here were just a joyful community of faithful people that invited me over and over again to different things and it wasn't to the priesthood right they didn't invite me to the priesthood they they invited this young uh, air force officer to uh, enter into the choir like sing the choir with us i'm like i don't know and then i did in the choir then it was a uh, guy invited me to be part of the knights of columbus i'm like i don't know and then i did it's constant invitation on the part of the people of this great parish um to the point where they said well, why don't you teach fifth grade you know faith formation ccd on sunday mornings and so i started teaching fifth grade ccds and i could tell in my life during the week whether i was at my job at the air force which i love like they paid me to fly right? they paid me to fly um fast and low right <laughs> but the thing that captured my heart and my mind every day every week was i was looking forward to my fifth grade class i was looking forward to being with my friends at the knights of columbus i was looking forward to my time the real joy in my life was in the church mm. i was really in the church and finally at some point in my my life of prayer as the lord was clearly saying you should be there that's where you belong and that's that gave me the, the grace and the courage to, to apply to the priesthood to the seminary that's cool that's good. That's good. Uh, and very similarly to Robert, as he said, um, you know, the Holy Spirit moves in, in our own hearts, but he also um, moves in, um, in other people and the, the things that we attend. So I think probably <clears throat> two of the most profound things for me um, was I, um, as a sixth grader, um, went to the Totus Tuus camp that the um, diocese offers every summer. And um, in that camp, it's just a week long where you get to spend um, a time with, you know, other middle school boys with um, a number of the priests of the diocese and all the seminarians of the diocese. Um, and I went that first summer and I just kept on being drawn back. Um, and as I kept on coming back, I realized that the thing that I was being drawn um, by was this joyfulness that I saw um, in the priests and seminarians. Um, and as I really started contemplating that in my own prayer um, and kind of with the help of another, um, you know, a number of other holy men, including a number of priests, um, that it just became clear that, that the joy that I was seeing in them was something that I was desiring. Um, and I really found that that desire was something that I um, thought was being to a place on, on my heart by the Holy Spirit. You know, they were raised a couple of things. Like, um, Father Stephen Rossetti reports on this uh, study that was done several years back about who are the happiest people in the United States. 
It's priests. Really? Priests have come way on top. And if they ask the question, "Who would you do your life over again? Who who says they would do that over again? It's priests again oh, in, in a pew survey. I think it's a pew or a Kara survey. But anyway, he reports on that Father Steve Rossetti. Um, and it's just, you know, it's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. That this pre this life is the most satisfying and most joy-filled that, that we see in our culture. Yeah. It's not because of the, like, short hours. You yeah, the short always, hours. Uh, I always work, going. I, we only work an hour yeah. on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> like, an hour on Sundays. No, <laughs> I'd say very similarly to the satisfaction. Like, you know, that research shows uh, just my personal encounters with, um, with the priests. Um, they've just made a big impact. Um, and, and it's a very, um, yeah, it's a very cool thing that the Lord um, blesses his church with. Um, very good. Well, I thank you guys for um, joining us um, as we dive into um, what the stewardship of vocation really means and, uh, and these personal examples of people living out their vocations and, and striving towards them. Um, so stay tuned as we move forward. We'll be um, getting more of the personal testimony, um, hearing more of the way the Lord worked in these uh, men's lives um, later this month. So give us a final blessing. Use that collar. And the Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Pray for us. Someone hit stop.